the beautiful Gate Apostolic Table. This platform is created for leaders, those called into ministry and to speak to the Church of Jesus Christ. The mandate of Pastor J.P. Hewish is to reach, build, and resource the next generation for a new mantle of leadership. which is the image and likeness of God in the earth, but at the same time giving us the potential, the substance, the spirit in body, right? Um, the immaterial in the material, that we would be able to express God who is spirit, God who is spirit. And, and um, you know, we've always thought of signs and wonders in a, in a different way. But you know, Jesus used signs and wonders to, especially in the book of John, to reveal something. I think it's in John chapter 20. Let's verses 30. He says, truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. So there were signs done, miracles done, wonders done, works done. But the word for signs is like signposts pointing towards something. Verse 31, but these are written that you may what? Believe that Jesus is the Christ. Basically, he's saying, I did miracles and sign and gave you signs so that you could believe that God is in flesh. Jesus the Christ means God is in flesh. That's what that means. Jesus the Christ means the Father and the Son is in Jesus. Right? So basically, the works were done to prove the indwelling God in Jesus. Similarly with us, our works are proof of an indwelling reality. Should be. Huh? And what I am saying now is, that Jesus went to the cross, died for this indwelling reality. The I in me and the you in us, etc. So that we could be in him, so that we could experience, experience, right? Experience the same realities as him. And so, it says that these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. To say that we are sons of God is to say that Christ is living in flesh. Right? God is in flesh, in Jesus. And in believing, and that believing you may have life in his name. EFT. Transfer something happening inside you, right? That when you believe this, and this is why, like I say, I have an issue with the Lord. I had an, I was wrestling with Him yesterday. I say, Lord, if I look at this, I mean, I believe that, you know, so. We are on this journey, on this journey of, of seeing the, the works of God through us.
Are you all with me? So your, so the righteousness for you is to function as God's son. Primarily. Okay? Are you all with me? Remember, Matthew 6.33. What did he say? Seek first the kingdom of God and end his righteousness. But situate the verse within the context. The context is, do not worry about what you eat or drink because your father, in other words, function as a son. Right? The context is there. The righteousness is explaining the template for how you should function. And I mean, I, I, I experienced that, those verses in last year, as I said before, when we were preaching on breaking free from the spirit of poverty and how we came under attack financially and how our finances were almost cut in, more than almost to 50% of our income was cut. And I was amazed at myself how I, how I could sleep. I was, and I looked at them and I said, Nee, die Heere het a werk in my gedoen. He did a work in me. Right? So, and then on top of that, we still traveled, did things. And today, this ministry is not in debt. It's not in debt. But there is a template and it builds. And now, I want to explain to you how you build that template into you. So we are positionally correct, but we need to build that position that in we, uh, of righteousness, of the template. God has made you a son. So I'm talking now about the importance of righteousness. So Matthew chapter 3 verses 15 to 17. So I don't think we'll finish everything, but we'll just go as far as we go. Matthew chapter 3 verses 15 to 17. And Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So I said to you that there are many, right, for practical living. Then he allowed him, and when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting upon him, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I well pleased. The heavens respond to righteousness. The importance of righteousness. The heavens respond. Jesus said, John, you must baptize me so that we can fulfill all righteousness. In other words, I am here because I need something that I must get. And God cannot give it to me directly. It has to come via you. Now God gets things. Jesus, God in flesh is saying, I need to get it through John. Right? And he's saying... If I let you baptize me, then we are fulfilling righteousness because I'm being compliant with what God is expecting from me. This is how I'm going to get authority to do what I am doing. Remember, I explained to you that in the first session. So, but at being compliant, the heavens opened. The heavens are open to sons. Right? When you function as a son, the heavens are open to you. That's why sometimes it's just like a small thought that is in your mind, but that thought is in a way that is in agreement with the way God wants you to function. 
And then you just say, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then you see all of a sudden things happen. Because they respond to sonship. All of creation was made for the son. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Everything he created was to submit to the son. So, the things respond to sonship, to the son. That's why even when you pray, what is the template for prayer? Sonship. Not friendship. The friend knocks on the door outside. The children are sleeping in the house with the father on the bed. But if a son asks anything, you see, he's talking about the template. So how we must condition ourselves to think like sons. Set our mind on this thing. Right? And, and so the heavens respond. The, the heavens, you know, in the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 verses 4. And this is the history of the what? Heavens. The heavens have a history. What's the history? When I open, when I close. For a simple example, Malachi, Jesus, or not Jesus, the word says, you know, if you bring your ties, then what? I will open up the windows of? See, there's the history. What, you see how it responds to a certain thing you do. Um, another one was Solomon. He says, if my people are called by my name, will do what? Then I will open. What does he say? That basically the heavens will respond. Jesus gets baptized, fulfills righteousness, and what does the heavens do? Open. The heavens have a history. And when you look at the history, they'll tell you when they close, when they open, why they open and why they close. Huh? <laughs> Maybe you haven't, you, you haven't read this verse. You read it, but you never saw it. What did the prodigal son say when he came to his senses? I will go back to the father and say, Father, I have sinned in your sight and against. So he didn't only sin against the father, he sinned against. So heaven didn't respond to him. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because he deviated from the template. He didn't want to function like a son. He wanted independence. My will, my opinion. I want to determine how I want to live. He's, he didn't want to be connected to the bios, life, the father. He separated himself and wanted to do that. So he sinned against the template for his life. So the heaven said, we weren't designed for that kind of living. So make your own way. But we will respond to compliancy. Are you all with me? Okay. So he sinned against heaven and said, why? Because heaven responds to righteousness. In other words, heaven simply responds to the way that God designed you 
to function. Okay, so that's one of the importance of righteousness. Righteousness causes heaven to respond. Okay, next point. As sons of God, we are kings of righteousness. Sons of God, we are kings of righteousness. Okay. First Peter 2, 9, we won't read it for time's sake. It simply says that we are a royal priesthood. That means that we are a king and a priest. So, but we will read Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 to 2. It says, for this Melchizedek, so Melchizedek means king priest, okay? Or Melchizedek, my king is righteous. Melchi, king, Zedek, righteous, okay? It's not only Melchi, but you drink Okay, king of Salem, priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. But first being by interpretation, if you interpret what Melchizedek means, the first interpretation is king of righteousness. And after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So, the, God made us kings and priests. Why? So that we could bring his righteousness into the earth. Right? And so, a king, so we are explaining, this is your template. We are kings and priests. The first things we are kings of are righteousness. Okay? Which is what? The templates, the, the designs, the blueprints. So our first thing that we must master is righteousness. Jesus mastered it. Was Jesus pure, clean, holy? Yes. But yet he fulfilled all righteousness. Okay? He lived. When it came to the family structure of father and mother and children, he was compliant. He submitted himself. God in flesh submitted himself to parents. The, one, the creator submitting to the creation. Okay? Righteousness, the divine way of God. Hebrews 5 and verses 5 to 6. Okay, he says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, Today have I begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So he takes the son and puts him in the order of Melchizedek, which is king and priest. Okay, see, see design, template, son, king, priest. Not priest, king, king, priest. In that order. In other words, the priority is to rule. Right? So, sonship, kingship, and righteousness uh, go hand in hand. Okay. Now, verses 10 to 11 of Hebrews chapter 5. So when we say we are kings of righteousness, this is the practical side. 
This is the practical side. Okay, as kings of righteousness. It says, verses 10, He is called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. The word dull means you have a lazy ear. Okay? You have a lazy ear. The word dull refers to sluggish, lazy. So, in a setting like this, so many scriptures, so many verses, you start becoming tired. You're not used to, the, to the, this kind of way of engaging the word, right? Dr. Sega used to say, if people are sitting, back in the old days, they used to sit the whole week f from, from Monday to Saturday, from 8 a.m. in the morning until 1 o'clock and then again 6 till 9, every day. And people, the buildings were full and people came just to sit and listen to the word. He said, this is a miracle. Because people can't sit in the charismatic season this long with this intensity of word, listening day in, day out. Okay? So, our laziness to hear or to listen to God's word is what makes it hard for the writer to speak these things. So, when your ear is lazy... It's sometimes difficult to explain certain things because you have to put like, like taking the Lego blocks and put all the different pieces together to capture the picture. Right? So in your hearing, there has to be a fitness. A mental discipline to hear and keep on hearing. So, things like, Pastor, keep the message short. <laughs> Too much information are signs of a sluggishness or a laziness. In the hearing. It takes consistent hearing and mental engagement to come to the place of being able to comprehend what God is saying in His Word. In this case, regarding Melchizedek. The word hard, hard. Hard to explain, the word hard, is defined as difficulty of explanation. The word uttered in is like putting Lego blocks together to form some picture. I mean, if the guy goes there and then he goes here and he goes over there and he comes back here and he's giving you all these different scriptures and you, and you now got to, oh, I, I get what you're saying. So likewise, the laziness to hear God's word is what, make, is what is making it difficult to explain it sometimes to hearers. Okay? Verses 12 of Hebrews chapter 5. Verses 12. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And it becomes such as have need of milk, not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Right? So, so the dull, listen to this, the dullness of hearing is a clear indication of where the person is in terms of growth. 
right? Because in the dullness of hearing, we can't give you meat, we must give you milk, which is an indication of your growth or your mental growth. So the word of righteousness is a word that is a meat word that belongs to them that are full age, right? That explains certain things. So if you are not of full age, we must give you milk. We must make it easy. So that's why when you read the book of Romans, there's not a lot of examples. As not it? Law, works, righteousness. What does work you have to, you understand, you have to use a lot of examples to explain it. And Paul doesn't use examples. He just gives you the, the words, right? Um, now the babe in Christ, listen to this, is unskillful in the word of righteousness. It says, for everyone that uses milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a... Babe, the word unskillful in the Greek means inexperienced or ignorant. So there is no experience concerning that word. Are you all with me? So it's taking the word of righteousness and then becoming experienced in its application. So, this word unskillful is pointing to the fact that the person is without a trial concerning that word. In other words, you have not been tested in that word. You lack experience of what you are saying. Through the, and there's a, there's a lack of piercing. We're talking about kings of righteousness. So, and, and when, you, when you do that, okay, see, let Let's read verse 14, then we'll, uh, it will help to say. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So the word of righteousness, which is meat, belongs to those who are full grown through the use of righteousness in their lives. The practice the word use, by reason of use, is the word that explains practice, habit. So those who are full grown are those who by reason of use who use the word of righteousness in the difficulty and they use it as a habit, practice it. Which means you cannot come to full age without the experience of that word. So some people never grow even though they know because in the trial they don't want to apply they live not by the word they live by their feelings okay because the word of righteousness is not speaking about your feelings it's talking about this is the way Okay? So you are at work and you've got the best boss ever. 
he likes to tell you what he thinks about you he he calls you names tells you you're the worst and then expects you to do things then the word of righteousness says submit to even the even employers that are unfair or mistreat you in that way and then it goes on to say for Christ left us an example that we should walk in his steps for he who did nothing wrong was crucified and he submitted to it right he went through it and then he would say and this is the will of god that in well doing we should silence the evil doers that's the word of righteousness this is the way then we come and say that's not how i feel sorry my friend you see but now do you know who you are you are a king royal priesthood you must master the way the only way you can master the way the first part of mastering it is knowing it but then after that you now have the trial now you must use it so that you gain experience but when you but while you apply it in your experience of the difficulty by the reason of use you are training your senses so that later on you are able to discern your discerning ability improves tremendously so next time when somebody comes and says yo i got a problem then they will say quickly i know what the problem is <laughs> because i have experience <laughs> i can pick up quickly i know my discernment level picks up quickly tell you what your problem is that's why certain things i can pick up, i can quickly pick up you know when somebody is struggling with rebellion because i went through it the whole thing i i'll pick it up very quickly i'll just see it from a distance you don't even have to say do nothing i just know <laughs> i just know we we wait for the moment when that challenge comes you understand by reason of use you master because the first thing you must master is righteousness because it is through that that you come that you develop the stature the stature and i mean like a simple example is like when you know when ethan became sick and you know lately i've been telling some of the people the stories and then they say we didn't know it was that bad but one of the things that that happened was is because he when he became sick he became very frustrated because he couldn't walk do you give him a chocolate where the chocolate before he could open open unwrap it and eat the chocolate and i remember the first time i gave him the chocolate when we came home I was thinking ek doen hom nou daar maak daarom dan nou vir hom happy gee hom 'n chocolate he took the chocolate the hands were going like this he couldn't get his hand to grip the thing and as he was trying trying he, he just took the chocolate and said he was angry over a period of time the frustration the i don't know the uncertainty the the inability to do what he once wanted to do or what he could do and cannot do it now the deep 
frustration and ang- uh, anger started developing in him to the point where he was disrespectful he was he would say he would say anything to you and he wouldn't care he just don't worry um to a point where at one stage now just before he did that and now my usual response is i dislike this disrespect especially when it comes to children i grew up on quattro i remember i i think i actually had a little, i don't i don't know something maybe something was done to me when i was a child i don't know what but who cares and because i would see little kids this is now a long time ago you see little kids i just see that two year tantrum i my mind i see pictures i see how i take a child and throw it against the wall i was just pictures are coming like this an anger and it was like yo um you know that's why i i killed a cat once because the i got so frustrated with this cat i was still in my mother's house i was still a teenager but i was so upset at this cat that didn't want to do what i wanted to do i put it in a bag and i hit him in the bag and then i threw him in the pool and said he drowned <laughs> but so i had this huge but by the time i had children i had sorted out most of the things but i still i disliked a disrespect and i was like i went to go and then i went to go and talk to the lord because he was talking like he wanted and one of the things he did was he would you know he would it went to that place where he told me i see he's not scared of me anymore he lost that that reverential fear for a father i said i'm not ekis bang for you only then he came to me and then he took his head and he put it against my forehead <laughs> and then he pushed it then he took a small finger of his put it against my chest and then he said ek gaan nie vir jou luister nie by that time I should have been boom bam crash my friend with vibrate <laughs> you know that's like no my friend you got the picture wrong you can need that to me and and so there were many things he would he would lose total control you couldn't even just say no you had to like you can't just say don't do that then he it's crazy 3 hours tantrum crying screaming going crazy scratching himself you have to try and calm him down 3 hours was the longest run that we had then i i went to the lagoon i said lord you got to tell me what to do here because if me i, I, I know i'm going to i'm going to do something to this child if he keeps going like this i'm going to fix him Nah. I said, Lord, you got to tell me what to do. And I heard the Lord say to me, I want you to love him. And I want you to ignore his disrespect to you. And he said, I want you, then he took me to Matthew chapter 5 and he said, I want you to love. The scripture says, I want you, he says, love your enemies. do good to them that hate you pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you and he goes on to say all the things you know he says so that you may be perfect as your father i said lord are you really like that is that you is that the father that i'm serving and i said and that day and that was just before that because it was escalating and just before that then we he had this incident where he my friend and then i took him and i said i love you i love you my son 
doesn't matter it's okay i don't understand but it's okay i love you i'm still going to love you and then he said then he pushes me away yeah man and so on and then comes again i love you it's okay and so on that is the trial of the word that is the trial of the word master the thing you understand what i'm saying we are kings of righteousness and reason of use exercise we get to discern our father understand our father right and so that we could explain our father to the to the sons of god that yes you make mistakes and so on but the father loves you right and he's saying be perfect like he is perfect you understand this is mastering it this is how we mature into our inward realities you you understand what i'm saying you got to master the principle the the way of a son has to be mastered in your life and you know even like financially the fact that we weren't um depressed and what because of how the finances went showed that we had mastered away right so e- you are kings of righteousness tell the person next to you you are a king of righteousness so verses 8 verses 8 i'm not i'm just talking i'm not trying to get into all the things verses 8 of hebrews 5 it says though he were a son yet learned the obedience by the things which he suffered he didn't say he learned obedience um for his suffering or for his mistakes he said he learned obedience by the things he suffered so the things i went through and obviously i'm speaking from my side my wife had her own challenges with everything but from my side the the challenges that i was going through with him i learned to obey even though it was difficult obedience so we were not suffering because of something we did wrong i was enduring suffering because i was obeying the word and sometimes we go through things where we 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 go through things because of our obedience but what happens is is that we learn like a dog that's being trained not to eat the meat but listen to the master don't let your flesh get a hold of you we learn not to let the inner desires inside of us take control of us and then we go with the desire and not with what the word says and then the 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 desire is talking like crazy to us telling us why we can't do these things you understand what i'm saying um so you learn obedience jesus when he went to the cross he wasn't suffering because he did something wrong he was doing the will of the father his obedience and in the suffering everything in him said father he revel for you this will let this cup pass me by and sometimes it's so difficult and the easiest thing that jesus was saying is let me out of this thing i don't want this instead of going through the valley of the shadow of death we run away from the valley because it says there he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake though i go through the valley of the shadow of death in other words i followed the shepherd into the valley his path of righteousness sometimes leads me into a valley 
leads me into places that that I wouldn't expect but you are with me your rod and your star will comfort me you will guide me through this you will be with my soul because you are the bishop and shepherd of my soul you will train me in your way and this is where we fail to grow because we do not master the principle and so what happens is we walk more according to the flesh than we do according to the spirit because the spirit walks simply by principle not necessary feelings a very simple example is if we say all of us are coming tonight to pray all of you will give different reasons why you can't come pray tonight and it has everything to do the fear because much because the but train yourself to walk by the instruction you understand we are so used to walking by the environment by what we feel by our desires that we don't even know that we are disobeying now it's a very simple example the holy spirit will say to you pray tonight no we're watching tv you understand the and because of that we sometimes prevent ourselves from coming into full maturity into growth the sun rising up into his order as a king into his order as a priest where he can rule and these kings will build jerusalem the places of peace okay uh, so it talks about our, our works uh, isaiah 32 verse 17 to 18 okay i have 10 minutes and then my time is up isaiah 32 verse 17 to 18 why is righteousness important and the work of righteousness shall be and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever You know one of the things i said is you know one of the things that for example even did in that time that it was like that you know uh we can still remember the first time he started actually to laugh after after having been so long in that frustration there there were times when he threat he would threaten marian i'm going to kill you and he goes and takes a knife I I said it quiet anger so controlled him take the knife and then he would run to her now to come with the knife and now and now I said now if I didn't obey the lord if my wife didn't obey the lord in the instruction and rather went with the feelings jay will soon at my prat my friend and went and give him hidings and hidings and because when you gave him hiding he just blew a gasket he just made it worse yeah he would take the bell and say do you want to give me then he go fetch the bell and say come here 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 do that right we could have produced a murderer because of our disobedience to the instruction of the lord this is not about your feeling this is about your obedience silence that desire silence those feelings by reason of use you understand tom has a thing that he says my father in the faith he says if you want the soul to blindly follow the spirit you must practice blind obedience obedience is the way that you silence the voice of reasoning right but we we strengthen the desires because we consistently yield to it yield to it and those desires become stronger and stronger 
right? But when you work, when your actions, when your labor, when your activities are of righteousness, the effect shall be peace. The effect of righteousness shall be quietness. The assurance you will dwell in a peaceable habitation. The kings of righteousness shall be the kings of Salem. They shall enjoy. You shall, you shall build your own spiritual climate in which you live. Called peace. Um, so, not going too long. Proverbs 12, 28. Remember, why is righteousness important? Because in the way of righteousness is life. And in its path, there is no death. You know, death is like the termination of something. The Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 4 talks about the shadow of death. They who sat in the shadow of death, light has sprung up. The shadow of death is the influence of death. And this is not necessarily physical death. But this is the experience of a depression that wants you to, in principle, come to the end of something. Where death is the termination, the end of life. This is where we, because we're under the shadow of death, we would say like, Ek is tired, ek is moog, ek ga nie meer is klaar. You want to end. You are under the experience of death. In righteousness, even though it's difficult, there will still be an experience of life. Right? And not the shadow of death. Death has no place in the path of righteousness. Right? Even in the midst of suffering. Right? And, and so, this is why you could see that even in the midst of our challenges, we find ourselves getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And you look, can you understand the pastor and say, Fro, hell is not happy, hell is what, ma. But people, even though people might not know the extent of what we went through, Job chapter 17, verse 9. Job chapter 17 verse 9. Yet the righteous will hold to his way. And he who has clean hands will be stronger and stronger and stronger. Strong meat, full age, mature, stature, weight. That things that things won't pull you down so easily. That's why after having been built and then coming again to a place where we experienced the financial attack, but in years before that we had so many different things that we went through financially. It was a constant. And so on. But that training, that when last year when we went through that, there was a stature that could handle that. That even that, the, that depression won't come on you. That anxiety, not that there wasn't a thought, but the thought could not grip you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you become stronger when you follow the path of righteousness. Okay, Proverbs, or oh, uh, Psalm 119, verses 33. Go five minutes. Just choose which ones I should give. Psalm 119 and 133. Order my steps in thy word. Let not iniquity have dominion over me. The ordering, the directing of your steps in all your ways in the path of righteousness will allow that iniquity will not take dominion over you. Right? Proverbs 2 verse 1. 
My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you. Okay? Skip all the way to verses 9. Then you shall understand righteousness, judgment, equity. Yes, every good path. So how does righteousness come to you? How is it explained to you? By those, the fathers in the faith. They explain to you, they give you the doctrine of Christ. The instruction in righteousness. Think about your, think, think. Think how many times will somebody tell you what the word says and how many times will you repeat back how you feel about it. Is that true? How we respond with our feelings. Mother, see, Rechi, it's not right. It's unfair. Why must I now be the one that must now suffer? Why must I this? It's, it's not about that. It's about righteousness. Follow the way. Grow. Learn. Okay? So we are kings of righteousness and what, what the practice of righteousness does is that it causes us to grow. And in that growth, in that expansion of us, there is an expansion, there is a measure of grace that is being increased inside of us. Right? So that you would stand in grace. You are sons of God, called to function as kings and priests, so that you may bring God's righteousness to wherever you are. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So let's stand. Let me finish. I, don't, I won't go on there. Let's just, let's just pray. Father, Father, right now, you are righteous in all your ways. You are righteous. You are the one that seeks to raise us up in righteousness. I, my prayer today is, Lord, that we would see that we are kings and priests and see that we have in us the strength of righteousness the strength to obey righteousness to follow in your way that even in the midst of suffering there is much life because when we suffer in the way that you have designed it to be the resurrection life inside of us. The law of that life is that where there is death, there will only be more life. We will be sown into death, but we'll be raised in much life. Where we die in, in the sense of our flesh, but our inward man is renewed day by day. Lord, let us remember your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, give us understanding of what we said today. To that, that which we communicated, that we would be able to grasp what is being said. And that we would see the value and the importance. Firstly, of our, the grand design that we were called to be sons, image and likeness in the earth. But that we are also kings, and that is the practical application of the righteousness that is of God. So, Lord, I pray, whatever we go through, I pray, Lord, guide us and direct us in the way that we should go. Order our steps. Let wisdom speak, but let wisdom guide us in the way of heaven. 
So Lord, we bless you. We bless every person that is here. And we thank you, Lord, that we are building rulers for you who will build the things that you desire to build in the earth. And so your kingdom will come in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you.